Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this end of year edition of the Garage Workshop. This week we're going to be looking back through what has been a fantastic year from the channel, talking about some of the bits I've enjoyed the most, some of the bits you've enjoyed the most and what I think are the best builds and also a little bit of an update on what's to come at the Garage Workshop. Roll the intro. <laughs> So for me, the standout thing for 2022 has been the growth of the channel. When I started the channel uh, about 18 months ago now, I didn't expect to get any subscribers or only friends and family, to be honest. And when the 1st of January clicked over, the channel had exactly 200 subscribers. Now, our current subscription, and this video was filmed on the 29th of December, so just before New Year's, but at the moment we have 754 subscribers, which is a massive 554 subscriber growth in a year, which is absolutely fantastic. And like all these things, you set out with fairly low expectations, but as more and more people join the channel, you set yourself a bigger goal. I set myself the goal of 250, thanks to all your support we got there. Then I set 500, thanks to your support we got there. My next major goal is to get to 750 and we've just got there. So of course, you know from previous videos, I'd love to get to a thousand, which is my absolute goal now. But in order to get to a thousand, you obviously need to produce content that you, the viewers, like. And what's been very clear is I've had some very popular videos this year, which have gone down very well with my subscribers. So what has been my most popular video, you may be asking yourselves? Well, Across the board, my two reviews of the Lumberjack uh, PT254 have gained lots and lots of views. They've been very slow burners, both of those reviews, and actually they were the first two videos that I made on the channel. And the review part one has had just over 2,200, and part two has had 2,700. And those project, those reviews in particular, have had more views than most of my projects, but... One of the most recently uh, viewed videos on the channel is second in the list. And I recently did a Christmas tree uh, video. I'll put a link to it up here. So those of you that have joined the channel maybe and haven't seen it, can have a look. It was a really, really great project and actually is one of the um, projects in, that's in my top three of products this year, but we'll come back to that at the end of this video. So that was obviously a very, very popular video. And as we stand now, it's had just over 4,100 views, but the number one ranked video on my list for 2022 is my Parkside Tall Hall, which I did in the middle of the uh, summer holidays at the end of August, which has had a massive 6,368 views and also has the very high number of comments. Now, I do a lot of Parkside reviews on this channel. I am aware of that. There's no preference over Parkside to anybody else. I don't, I'm not sponsored by them. I don't really have a preference from either them or Workzone, but I think Parkside design a lot of items particularly tools and things like that, which are great for the amateur woodworkers like us. Or they have things that are well known and made by other makes, but they're really comparable in terms of quality, but a lot less money. So for me, the, the attraction of Parkside tools is obviously they're cheap, but I wouldn't just buy them if they're cheap. They've got to be fairly effective too, which they are. So that video, the Parkside Tool Hall, where I talk about a number of things I bought, my most popular video of 2022. Okay, so what have been my three lowlights uh, this year? The three videos which, uh, when I've put them up, I've been most disappointed with either the video or what's happened. And I looked through all the videos in the preparation for this one. And to be honest, there were probably a lot of things I could have picked, but my number one with out a doubt biggest failure this year is the one that still haunts me the most it's a video that didn't get a huge amount of views uh, it's in my back catalog and i will put a link in the description to this one but the one video i think that disappointed me the most was this one when i attempted to make a tambour cabinet now 
having watched that video lots of times and having reflected a lot on what I did in that video, I realised that that was far too much of a jump for somebody with my skill level to try and make something as sophisticated as that. But what annoyed me, I think, more than anything else was I made mistakes when I made the creation of it, but it took a lot of hours. It might have only been the 10 or 12 minutes, however the video long for, that was made for you to see, but days and days went into doing that project. And at the end, it really did feel like a failure. With some of my other failure videos, like the lathe, Parkside lathe, videos it didn't feel so bad because I felt like I was learning something in that Tambor cabinet one I just really didn't and that today is still the video that disappoints me the most so that's number one on the list but what other videos have I had that have disappointed me this year well to be honest there haven't been that many I've been very lucky, I've had some fantastic projects, and as I said, the things that did go wrong haven't really worried me too much, but the second video was when I made my original battery storage unit, and again, there'll be a link in the description to that. I wasn't very happy with it during it, and to be honest, the end result, I thought it looked a bit naff, if I'm gonna be honest, which is why I took the opportunity to completely redo that unit in my recent video and put all of the charges into a draw unit. So those two videos are the ones that I look back on and think, perhaps I could have done a slightly better job there with both of them. So the last video that I haven't been too happy with in 2022 is actually one of my recent Christmas builds and it was the Christmas trivet which I'll put a picture of there. Um, if you haven't seen the video um, there'll be a link in the description but it was a lot of effort and not really um, the end result wasn't really what I expected it or hoped it would be and actually now I've had a chance to use it a couple of times um, I'm not really very happy with the overall uh, quality of the product I think the process of building it was fine but what I actually made wasn't the, the best to be honest with you so that would be my third video in my set of three videos that haven't been the greatest so for me the videos that I've got the most out of this year are perhaps ones that you wouldn't have even considered and again I'll put links to all of these videos in the description there were two that really stick out the first one is this one which is the finger joint jig uh, that I made and absolutely brilliant video from my point of view. I think I did a really, really good job with that. I haven't used it as much as I would like to have done. I've actually only used it twice since I've made it. And it was basically uh, an idea taken from Keith Brown's video, which is also fantastic. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. But that, the finger jig, uh, the finger box jig, really, really good video. I was very, very pleased with how that turned out. And I still think to this day, it's probably the best thing, single thing, that I've made on the channel. So that's the first one. The second one I was really pleased with, virtually got no views on the channel. It was another 10 minute tour review and it was of the garage floor paint. Now, if you think back, if you saw the video, again, link in the description, uh, I basically painted the garage workshop floor using the Parkside garage floor paint. And I have to say, I am so impressed with that paint. It's absolutely brilliant. It's had all sorts of abuse. It's had wood glue on it, it's had dust on it, it's had heat on it. It's recently gone through an extremely cold spell and nothing has touched that. And I thought when I'd laid it down, oh, it's going to be, you know, chipped here and there. And I was a bit concerned about it, I'm not going to lie, but I have been super, super pleased with it. Absolutely fantastic. So that is a real success for this year. But the third one is perhaps my most favourite of all of my videos. So the third and final video that I'm most impressed with this year is this one, the zero clearance insert for my table saw. Now, this was a project which when I set out, it involved quite a lot of complicated skills that to be honest, I didn't know if I was good enough to do. And actually the finished product is brilliant. It's been in my uh, table saw since I made it and it's been absolutely fantastic. A really, really pleasing quality product. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you know sometimes I don't always do the finishing touches brilliantly, but this one, absolutely spot on. So that has been my video of 2022, the zero clearance insert for my Evolution table saw. Okay, so looking ahead to 2023, which we're gonna be in in a few days, what have I got coming up on the Garage Workshop? Well, I'm gonna set myself two very important New Year's resolutions. The first one is 
I'm gonna try and level out the time of my videos. For those of you that are watching and have been watching my videos, sometimes they're nine minutes, sometimes they're 21 minutes, and I wanna try and get a bit of a, a, an equilibrium in them because they're a bit all over the place. And it's always very difficult when you're an amateur YouTuber like me because you never know what you want to keep in and what you don't wanna keep in, then before you know it, the video's too long or you cut too much out and too much is left on the floor in the cutting room. Or on the computer. So that's my first New Year's resolution. And my second New Year's resolution is to try and improve the quality of the final product. Now that's gonna go hand in hand with some of the projects that I've got going on this year in the Garage Workshop. I'm gonna start making a few more things that I can use inside my house. And you've heard me say on my videos many times, oh, it doesn't matter, it's only in the garage, no one will see it. Well, that's a get out and I shouldn't be using that. What I wanna do is to try and make products that either A, I'm happy to have in the home, or B, could possibly even be sold. So in 2023, I'm gonna try and do a few more of those types of projects. And the other main project that I'm going to be working on this year in the Garage Workshop is this, the Garage Workshop. I have realised from making my projects this year that some of the things I've got in the workshop are absolutely fantastic and really, really good. But I've also realised that some of the things that I'm using aren't suiting my needs. This unit being the very best. This was one of the first things that I made on the Garage Workshop. And to be honest with you, it suited me till this point. What has become apparent now though is that A, it wasn't made brilliantly enough and you'll know that from the recent video when I put the drawer unit in and the entire unit came apart and I had to put it all back together. So A, it's not made well enough and B, the storage isn't what I need it to be. I need to have smaller, more accurate storage than I've got. I could try and retrospectively do that but due to the way it was put together in the first place it's going to be very difficult to do that because all of the gaps are slightly wonky or the wrong side. Sizes. So one of my major projects for next year is to redesign this section of the garage workshop and actually I might not even go for the fixed system that you can see here. I've seen quite a lot of videos on YouTube where people have got their mitre saw stations where they can move them around and have they have things that come out like uh, wings or arms that come out to support the wood. So I think I might go for something like that but that's going to be a big project and also as you know without me telling you that's going to be a very expensive project when you consider the cost of the wood at the moment so that is one of the things that I'm going to be working on in the coming months but I also want to make some more usable smaller things which I'll also be doing and some of my upcoming projects are going to be those types of things. So to end with I want to leave you with my standout moment of this year. Now earlier in the year I did a sawhorse uh, build. I've got the sawhorses, I've used them a few times, they're absolutely fab, but I did something which I knew at the time was a really stupid thing to do, uh, but I still did it, and I managed to capture the moment on film where to test the strength of my sawhorses, I laid a piece of wood, and then I laid on top of the piece of wood. If you didn't see this, because I think I put it right at the end of the video, I'm gonna leave you with that moment, because for me, it is the one moment which really sums out up what a complete and utter wally brain I can be. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. I just want to say a really, really happy new year to all of you. Thank you so much for all of your support this year and for sticking with the channel. And also thanks for passing it on. We've really, really increased the number of subscribers and that can only happen because of you. If this is your first time here, please can ask you to subscribe, like, comment, hit the notification bell. It's really important to that Google Analytics. And if you are a regular viewer, thank you so much. I've hoped you've enjoyed this quick end of year review. Have a fantastic new year and I'll catch you on next week's video when we're going to be building something. Happy New Year fellow woodworkers.